Hi everybody, this is Nikki um, and I'm here to do another video that is absolutely my personal experience and personal opinion and absolutely not to be used as medical advice, um, maybe just food for thought. Um, I'm on this one today because um, this has been something that I've really been thinking about for the last you know, couple of months probably, at least a month and a half, um, as I try to sort out auto mode and my morning blood sugars and my overnights and all these things. Um, and then I've popped on some, some boards, some user groups and whatever, and I see that this is kind of a hot topic right now. And maybe it's always been, I will qualify everything with, I used to not test <laughs> my blood sugar. Um, so I must've missed a lot, you know, of what normal diabetics were doing, but I'm on top of it now. And I have been for a while. Um, and the reason I mentioned the user groups is because what I kind of felt like was I have had diabetes for 14 years and I do, I've always been aware of Dawn Phenomenon and Samoji Effect. Um, never knew the difference. I'll tell you the difference really quick in case you also don't know the, the, the difference. Um, but I also know that for 14 years, Dawn Phenomenon never meant much more to me than it was something to discuss with my endocrinologist and let her or him, um, make some adjustments to my temp to my basal rates to counter it. Um, I don't ever remember it having a profound effect. And, you know, maybe they saw a couple of high blood sugars and they said, yeah, let's, let's tweak this. And that always seemed to do the trick. Um, and here I am over the last month and a half, couple months, I don't even know what it's been now, struggling with my morning blood sugars um, and doing all of this. You guys can see graph graphs on my morning coffee, which I never had to do. Um, and it, so I just assumed it's got to be Dawn phenomenon or Samoji effect. Moving on, I'll go check it. Ch I'll go check it out. Um, I'm here to discuss a possible alternative theory. Um, it's not going to be one that's popular with everybody because, as I said, some people love auto mode and they're just in it, and that's great. I have no problems with the people who love auto mode. I think it's fantastic. I'm a little bit jealous, um, but I'm not one of those people because I do struggle with it. And so my alternative theory does have to do with the possibility of auto mode kind of creating its own morning effect, kind of like a mechanical morning effect. Um, and I'll tell you why, because I can see it in my numbers, but I'll tell you why. And I'm not here to sell anybody on anything. I just see this discussion and I see it coming from people who they say, you know, for 20 years, I've had diabetes. And I'm like, how are people with 20 years with diabetes just now really struggling? And, and a lot of them. So maybe something's in the air or maybe something's on our body. Um, okay. So basically here are the basics in case you didn't know, cause I didn't, um, Samoji effect is what's caused by having too much insulin in your blood during the night. Now they say during the night, but then they do go on to say that Samoji effect can actually occur anytime during the day. It's what, it's what makes it different from Don phenomenon. Well, a couple of things. Um, but it is not the same thing. It can, it can, it can happen anytime a day and it's a rebound. It's called rebound hyperglycemia and it comes from having too much insulin and therefore a sugar crash or some hypoglycemia. And then that rebound, um, that sounds very reasonable for me at night during the day, you know, all, all the time. So that's always a possibility. Um, dawn phenomenon, um, occurs in the wee morning hours. Um, it occurs in all human beings. It's just that diabetics don't create the insulin to, to counter it. So it's why it actually has an effect on our blood sugars. Um, and what they said, it, it is not caused by a low blood sugar. Rather, it's caused by a surge of hormones that the body puts out in the early morning hours. Um, again, everyone has it. <clears throat> diabetics just can't handle it. Um, I'll include a link to where I got this. It's from verywell.com. Um, and it's pretty standard stuff. Um, but if you wanted to read it and argue it with me, that's cool too. Um, now here's where my, here's where I think there's something to be debated. This is the first thing I'm going to suggest that one who's wondering about what's happening with Dawn phenomenon and everything at this point in their diabetes, um, one who's wondering about this might want to ask themselves, when did I start having to wonder about this? Um, because as I said, once I started to look at numbers, I realized that this really is, I'm not going to say it's never been true for me. Um, but this kind of real struggle has been true since being on the 670. I'm not bashing the 670. I'm just kind of calling it like I see it. I'm still on the 670. I want it to work. Um, and I'm going to show you what the difference is. And I have to talk calibration factor or C factor 
because I'm using it and I'm using it to understand what's happening overnight. Um, so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to do this. This is not organized enough, and maybe I can't. But um, this one say about my C factor. Um, silence on my end is not because it's not going well. In fact, it's going very very well, um, and I have so much I want to offer to people to you know to listen to um, and try. But um, I'm trying to understand these numbers right now, and they are very complex. Um, but I will give you a quick rundown. What I understand about the calibration factor in general is that it is a concentration. It's your concentration inside your in, in, inside your interstitial fluid. There is a relationship between interstitial fluid glucose and, and blood glucose, but it's a very complicated relationship. Um, so what I do know is that oftentimes what I can see in my interstitial fluid glucose, my IFG, which is how I get my calibration factor, is that I can see kind of the potential for what my blood sugar could do if all factors remain the same. So that was kind of a mouthful. But what I, what the reason I'm saying this is because I would like to take a morning before I knew to look at my calibration factor at 4.30 in the morning and before I even had any idea that auto mode maybe was what was setting me up for these high blood sugar mornings. Um, and I'll show you the difference in my calibration factors. So for instance, this is January 16th. Um, at 6.25 a.m., which is about what time I get up, my calibration factor was a 6.28. That is a, a lot of glucose in my, in my interstitial fluid. It's the potential for a higher blood sugar. Now, my blood sugar was a 182. So I did my insulin. I was a little bit mind boggled by that because it was a high one to wake up to. But I did all my insulin. I did everything I knew how to do. The remainder of the morning, my calibration factor stayed high, 6.5, 6.24, 6.08. Um, it was just a little bit of a struggle and I was really on that particular morning I was holding off on my coffee and letting all the insulin Go and I kept waiting to have the coffee and I just didn't understand it now looking back I understand that all that insulin was meant to help my calibration factor and therefore my blood glucose stay lower So I needed it to cover that I didn't know that at the time um, That was back on January 16th. That was before I even checked a 4:30 a.m. Number on January 18th, um, here was another one where I woke up. Now, this one I woke up at 3.15 a.m. I don't know why because I don't even think I had thought about it at that point. And I found my calibration factor to be a 7.04. That's pretty high. Um, my blood glucose was only a 151. But what I get from those numbers is that if I stay in auto mode, and this is not going to be true every time, but this is really kind of the, the tendency that I see. If auto mode is what's pushing that and I stay in it, that blood glucose is gonna to continue to rise. And even when I wake up and I start doing my stuff, my potential is gonna be to, to go high. So when I add in a cup of coffee, unsuspecting, it pushes me up, 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 and it continues to. And I'll tell you guys why I think that's happening. That morning, 6.30 a.m., my calibration factor was a 6.5. Um, uh, at 7.30, it was a 7.4 you know, 6.5, 6.2, 6.88. I mean, it's the same thing I was trying and I was doing all the insulin, but I wasn't able to get the food that I was supposed to be able to get for that insulin. I'm eight and a half minutes into this and I don't know if this makes any sense. Um, that was before I understood about what auto mode was doing at night and to check. Um, so I'll just give you a quick one from last night. If I have it. Okay, so for instance, last night I said this sounds a little bit uh, extreme, but whatever. Um, I got up at 4.15 in the morning and I checked my calibration factor and I checked everything last night. I had a great night. So even when I saw a great calibration factor, I decided to get out of auto anyway because my, my blood sugar was a 134 at 4.15 in the morning. My calibration factor was a 5.6. That shows pretty stable. But when I looked at my graph screen, what I saw was over the an hour up until 4:15, there was a reduced basal rate, which it was doing to counter whatever the you know whatever my blood sugar is doing. That night. I have no problems with what Otto's doing at night, but I understand that what's going to happen going into the morning is it's setting me up for these high sugars that are just stubborn. Um, so I did exit Otto. I was a little bit worried about crashing in the two hours before I woke up. My blood sugar was a 134 at 4.15 a.m. When I woke up at 6.21 a.m., it was a 124, and my calibration factor was a 4.99, which meant that what it did in those two hours was just kind of counter what those temp 
basil would have done had I stayed in auto. Um, the rest of my blood sugars all today have been a 155, 138, 110, and my calibration factors have been a 5.6, a 4.4, 6.24, 1, 6.1, and that was after eating food. I am 10 and a half minutes into this. It's just a thought that it might not be, or it might not only be Dawn Phenomenon or Samoji effect. It might be something somewhat of a mechanical auto mode morning effect. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, on to the next episode. Have a great day.